Warning, the following features very, very stupid people with very, very stupid opinions. Please be advised. All right, welcome back. Episode 166 of Chaotically Intolerant. We have John and Michael here today. Um, we're starting to really mix it up, I think. I'm, I'm happy to see everyone kind of mixing in together a little more. Um, I tried to get Caleb on today too, but um, not not today. We're trying to get the baseball summit going. Uh, maybe next week. Uh, but today we have uh, we're going to start out with some headlines. Then we're going to jump into an immaculate grid. We're going to talk about the last probably week or so of baseball, and then we'll do a uh, baseball movie snake draft at the end of the episode. So um, you can check in the YouTube uh, timestamps um, if you want to find all that. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let's go. All right, boys. Welcome back, John. It's been, shoot, eight weeks Two since months, you've been on yeah. last? It's been a couple yeah. months since you've been on. So, um, it has been a, I guess, a little bit more of a negative downturn for the Royals, I think, in that that last two month period, right? Yeah, we had the series against the uh, the Guardians. We went three and one, and then somehow drop a series to the Marlins and the Rockies. For the most part, our outside of Bobby Wett, we're not getting a ton of offensive production. One day, Michael Garcia and Pasquantino will hit. And then, like, the 5 through 9 go 0 for 20. And then the next week, it's just Bobby Witt. Yeah, it, it was yeah, a tough... Yeah, we figure it out. Seemed like a tough June. I think you guys are starting to figure it out a little more. Uh, although dropping dropping series to the Rays and Rockies isn't super encouraging, I guess. But you guys always show out well in the All-Star. You got four All-Stars. Um, they did announce the star rosters. Who do you think just didn't deserve it from the Royals? Cole Reagans. Cole Reagans. Gotta... Like, go ahead. Go he ahead. has a six and six, I think. He has a decent ERA. He's third or fourth in strikeouts in the American League, so I'm sure that's why he's on the roster. He started out his career as a reliever. I'm sure he will be used as a reliever in the All Star game. Yeah, there are guys that are probably a little more deserving this year. Obviously, Seth Lugo and Bobby Witt were locks. Salvi, I think, is more of a legacy ad. Yeah. He's had a, a few, a month and a half of a slump. But catching or the the catcher pool is probably a little light in the American League, and he's Salvador Perez. So, I think it's just like when you know Cal Ripken, toward the end of his career, was <laughs> was still making the All Star team every year. That's yeah, how it before, should be. Before we really jump into all this stuff, um, which uh, this is his ninth. Uh, All Star game as well, Salvi. So, um, good job to Salvi. Um, let's let's talk a few sports headlines. Chris Paul is going to the Spurs uh, on a trade, I guess. Um, he's that that career is just kind of over, right? I, I don't. I feel like he's not going to win a title with the Spurs, and he was kind of ring chasing. It felt like when he went to the Warriors, trying to revive a little bit of his career. But um, it's, I mean, what is there to even say? It, he's a good veteran presence, I think, for the Spurs, right? Mm-hmm. Michael, you have any insight on that? It's funny. He's just going to all the teams that have either have been or are Western Conference contenders. And he almost went to the Lakers back in the day, right? And then the trade was shot down. But I don't I don't remember if he would have won a ring there. I don't know what year that was, what, when it was I think the that was vetoed. That might have been the year Kobe won it. Well, then there you go. So he's just destined to not win one, I guess. The universe is telling Chris Paul that it's over. Uh, it was 2011, 2011, wow. the 2011 lockout. They were going to get rid of Paul Gasol and Lamar Odom in exchange for uh, Chris Paul. I feel like, I don't know, there it definitely would have been at least a better chance at him winning a title um, rather than like Blake Griffin <laughs> and the Clippers. Yeah, they might have won it the Donald Sterling year. They really might have won it. Mm -hmm. um, which was super unfortunate. They were one of the two or three favorites. Yeah, were, those those, those were fun luck. teams too. Those were really, really fun teams to watch. What, what, what? Where's a team right now that could really use Chris Paul? Where you say it might put him over the edge? 
I can't think of any. New Orleans just traded for John, uh, Jonte Murray. Think- so now they have that Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson, DeJounte Murray core. A young team like that might be able to use him. What about the Knicks? This. They're they're kind of right there, right? They they could be looking for more of a veteran presence in the locker room. You know, this is I think in my lifetime, this is probably the second time the Knicks have felt like a somewhat real team. The other time was that like one or two years with Mello. But this feels like they that could have been a big move they they go out and get. Now again, my basketball knowledge is a little bit more surface level. I, I could just sound like an idiot saying that the Knicks could use Chris Paul. Somebody could be like, he's too old. That's not the right position, whatever. So, or Cleveland, I, I think Cleveland, they're young, but they seem like they've been kind of on the up and up. They just hired a new coach, um, which I guess they fired their coach. I don't know why they made the playoffs this year, but I guess Cleveland fans were not happy with them. Uh, yeah. Chris Paul, were... congrats, Chris Paul. Yeah. Well, the Knicks, the Knicks just traded like everything that they had for um, Mikael Bridges. They traded yeah. like seven picks. So I don't know <laughs> if they have anything left to trade except maybe like a water cooler. And what and left Chris you Paul to give at this up? point? I mean, they Might be with fair. this contract, it could have been cash enough. considerations. Yeah, the money. <laughs> they do. All right, let's see. The Phil. Uh, I'll go to Arch Manning. Arch Manning is in. He is in on College Football 25. Um, I don't know how big a video game people you guys are. I am planning on buying a PS5 just to play College Football 25, and that's it. I have no other interest in any other games. Madden has sucked ever since, like, Madden 16 or 17. They're running the game on the Madden engine, though. Well, so. I heard it's it's going to be a lot different. It's going to be a lot better, at least. And, and I, I've seen what I've seen, at least. It doesn't look as overly realistic which i think is a good thing because i never really liked madden for being so realistic it doesn't need to be like that put it into the other traditions that are a part of the teams like college football is doing um but yeah arch arch said he needed to focus on football well i guess he's focused enough and i guess the final thing and this will be a good lead into baseball the phillies have activated bryce harbour and kyle schwarber off the il and then they'll probably get them pretty fresh after the all-star break so uh, we can jump into a little bit of the Philadelphia Phillies here. Uh, I just had the question, are are they setting us up for another collapse, or do we really think they can take on the Dodgers' firepower? Well, the Phillies and Dodgers, we'll, we'll get a good idea of where they stand tonight. But both teams, I mean, it's bigger news for the Phillies to get those guys back because the Dodgers are the ones nursing a lot of injuries at this point. But if you think about, if you look at the two franchises over the last two years in particular, the Phillies have won five postseason series or rounds. The Dodgers have won zero. Braves have won zero. And that's because they've lost to the Phillies. So for as a heartbreak of a city as Philadelphia is, I know the Phillies haven't won a World Series since 2008. The Phillies have had two pretty deep postseason runs the last couple of years after going 11, uh, 10 years, 10 years without an appearance um who you know if you think about it if these teams do match up in the postseason it would be in almost certainly in the nlcs who would have more pressure in theory to perform i would still think it would be the dodgers because they are complete world series or bust right every single year whereas yeah the phillies say their world series are bust but like they just kind of got relevant again you know so, and, and that city is hungry. I mean, Philadelphia, like, say what you want, fans, awful people and all that, whatever. <laughs> Not awful people, but awful fans. They care. Like, sports is the lifeblood of a city like Philadelphia. They don't give two you-know-whats in Los Angeles, really. I mean, there are people who care about the Dodgers, but it's, it's a joke almost compared to a city like Philly. But I still think the Dodgers would be more of a disappointment if they didn't win the World Series this year, than the Phillies. I don't know if you guys agree with that. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think um, I think if Philly loses in the NLCS to the Dodgers, you can just say, "Oh man, they really they just ran into the buzzsaw." Like, what are you gonna do? You that Dodger team is loaded. They you can't argue that. And if obviously, I think if the Dodgers lose, I think if they even lose in the World Series, I think it's a bust. It's not even just get there; it's win because you look at. The Orioles are the best team right now, you know, best team um, to contend with the Dodgers. But it's still like this Dodgers team, when they're when they're healthy and they're cooking, they're the best team of all time, possibly. 
Well, if they like, they have Max Muncie, Walker, Bueller, Bonsolin, Joe Kelly, all on the IL. You bring them back. Uh, yeah, yeah, Emmett Sheehan. They have a whole. They have a whole rotation on the IL. Mm-hmm. They have so many. As far as reinforcements coming, yeah, it's going to be tough to beat the Dodgers in the playoffs. And like you were saying, they they win all in. If they don't win the World Series, they financially they promised their city a World Series. When you spend <laughs> the kind of money they did on Yamamoto and Otani, I mean, especially even the casual fans in LA would turn on the team. It will be yeah, it would be a disaster if they did. if they got knocked out in the National League side of the bracket. It would be mm-hmm. a disaster. Uh, I just want to see Otani play postseason baseball. Yeah, we never did get to see that in in the other LA. Um, you know, the, the Angels. I, I took a bunch of notes this week on, on all the games or on all the teams. I did not take notes on the Angels. I did not take notes on the White Sox. And I did not take notes on the Rockies because I just said there's it's not even worth. They're bad. That's my notes. All three of them. They're really, really bad. I even took notes on the A's um, because they're they all take, getting traded. The A's Everybody's are traded. Yeah, um, but they did take care of business against the Angels. So that's that's why I gave them a little bit of respect once We'll, uh, we're going to do our Immaculate Grid real quick to get our brains warmed up, and then we'll um, really jump into everything. So this is today's Immaculate Grid. I don't oh, know where God. we want to start here. Yeah, I mean, I could do this, these in like two seconds. I, I almost want to just challenge you guys because I, you know, I think it's it's more fun. If we want to do like a, a route oh. round, if you guys get stuck anywhere on okay, here. Yeah, that's probably the best this. idea. Oh, I'm, um, I'm going to get stuck on I it. I already got my... Okay. Uh, White Sox, L.A., Sammy So. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. No, it's Joe, Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly, that's a good that's, one. Yep. Yeah, I was actually thinking you could have gone Craig Kimbrell, A.J. Pollock. Uh, Joe Kelly works. I'm curious. Not Joe you. Torrey. Oh, man. That Kill us. Correct. Don't ruin this for me. Okay. Tommy Pham. White Sox and yep. Cards. Well, there's a, yeah, the White Sox right now have a bunch of ex-Cardinals. Pham, DeYoung. Uh, who was the pit Tommy Fam? Um, Tommy Fam, major, uh, famous for punching someone over fantasy football. The most relatable oh, he, fight. He also got stabbed outside a strip club during the pandemic. He did. It happens yeah. to the best of us. Um, the Royals are talking about trading for Tommy Fam. That would just kill me. Uh, here is where Duke, Sam, Zach. This Duke, is where Sammy Sosa comes into play. Sox oh, Rangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Started and ended his career with the Rangers. What percentage do you think that's going to be at, though? Do you that's, think we can get a little lower? Because I feel like Sammy Sosa is going to be the one of the top picks. That probably will. It's probably it's probably the, yeah. He's probably among the most has popular. to be the yeah has yeah. to be. I just can't think of another Ranger White Sox. I for some reason I, Robin Ventura popped into my head, but I realized I thought that because he got punched or he punched Nolan Ryan. Nolan yeah, Ryan. I don't know if he actually ever played for Texas, but I don't know why that one came to my. Did Octavio Dotel ever play for? I'm Texas? sure he did. I, yes. All yeah, Edwin going. Jackson. Edwin Jackson, I'm pretty sure, has been on, I think. Ricky Henderson played Maybe. for everybody. Oh, this we, guy? I don't know. Yeah, Do we he played sit for on like this? 15 teams. Sit let's, on it. Let's sit on like... it. Let's let's go to the gold glove section because right, the, we'll the MVP, yeah. I feel like those are going to be easier. We can sit on it, and at least we can get. Well, now, does, so does like gold nine. glove, do you have to have won it with? That because I like you could say Mookie Betts. But does he want a gold glove with LA or is he only one one with Boston? I'm pretty sure he's one with LA. Click on the gold where is the word gold glove. It sometimes will tell you up there. When, when paired, paired the with oh, for that team. Oh, all right. With I'm a non team sure. category. Okay. I, I think Mookie did. Mookie won one in the outfield with LA. Yeah, he definitely did. And that's a safe one. Sure. The okay, MVP, we if we want to go, if we want to get some points, or if we want to get a low percentage, Kurt Gibson won the MVP with Ooh. the Dodgers. That's yeah. a good one. The Dodgers had like a million rookies of the year. They had five years in a row in the 90s where they did it, but MVPs don't come to mind quite as easily. So that's a good one. Obviously, the Cardinals, I mean, pretty pretty easy. The safe gold I glove is Arenado. Who else has won a gold glove? Oh, I was going to say Ozzie Smith. Smith. Ozzy Smith, well, Ozzie won Smith Old Smith, I think, would be a safe one too. Yadi um, Molina, of course. I mean, yeah, I want a bajillion. Try, I'm trying to think about the low. I feel like Ozzy Smith would be a low percentage just because he's old. That's it. Yeah, because like Goldie. Ozzie Smith. I'm pretty sure Ozzy's going to be the top choice. 
24? Yeah. That's He's not the wizard. I not mean, and then the easiest MVP is Pujols. Is there anybody else? Musial. 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 Yeah. No, I was say Ozzy. Did Ozzy Smith win MVP? We can't use him though. And we can't. Um, I think he did. I'm gonna I'm gonna look that up since it's not cheating at this point. Yeah, Damn I think he did win MVP. He uh, he was NLCS MVP, but he never All won. All right, MVP. Rangers Gold Glove MVP are gonna go both ways because A Rod won both, I Rod won both. MVP. Uh, I know uh, Hamilton Trey won is going to be that. the. Highest because it's funny. For some reason, people like to pick Josh Hamilton because yeah. he was a freaking lunatic. Juan <laughs> Gonzalez won two MVPs with Texas. That sounds pretty obscure. Yeah, there you sounds go. Sounds obscure enough. Twenty-two percent. Jesus, that stat. You would think you would think that Alex A Rod and and Pudge would be the. The top big two, names yeah. there. Yeah, I feel and, like you could throw Ian Kinsler in there. He's he has to have won a Gold Glove, right? Ian Kinsler, famous Red Sox. Yeah, twenty eighteen <laughs> played for the twenty eighteen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but he made an error that cost him Game Three. So, yeah, let's see. But no, I mean, Ian Kinsler, no. Sorry. All right. Well, let's. I mean, is it really we losing when there? you still you know that Which you would have got it right? You're just trying yeah. to. You're so smart at this point. You're just trying to beat the system. Yeah, get the extra credit. Like yeah. I said, the, uh, I can only think of Sa- Sammy Sosa and Texas and the White Sox. You said, Mike, you had someone real, real obscure. I think earlier. Did I for Texas and the and the White Sox? I you said Ventura, no. but that yeah, but work. that's not right. It's not right. I'm just thinking. Who was like, pitched? Think of think of the Rain, uh, Rangers bullpen. Will Smith? Did he ever play for the White Sox? No. No. Think of no, like, they haven't weird, won a World like, Series. Pictures. Yeah. Chapman <laughs> never played for the White Sox. I don't know why, but Mark Burley keeps coming to mind. But Mark I know Burley that's not true. Won like seven Gold Gloves, but that's an exaggeration. He probably won four. No, um, I probably won seven. He won a ton and threw two no hitters. Uh, I love Mark Burley. White Sox. That really feels I mean, like all one of the guys more... there now are, are like kind of like washed up guys. They suck so bad. Yeah. They just feel like the most irrelevant friend. Even even the World Series in like yeah. 2005 felt so irrelevant because it's like that was the year after 04, which, mm-hmm. you know, I think for most baseball fans, you consider that one of the greatest postseason, just postseasons in general in history. Just with the Red Sox, obviously, and they had two comebacks, but that's a very memorable postseason. Oh three, obviously, very memorable too. So you did, follow it up. Sox, who did, did the Edwin, White Sox beat? Edwin Astros. Jackson. I was gonna say Edwin Jackson. They beat the Astros. Yeah, Edwin Jackson. He's probably pitched for the Rangers at some point. I would think. I... We're gonna click it. Did not uh, get it. Oh Rarity my God! Of the fifteen teams he's played for, I Dotel was probably the right. So we we got cute. Yeah, Sammy, so, Pudge, Hamilton. Yeah. Well, Lance Lynn, yeah, I forgot about Lance Lynn. Yeah, Lance Lynn did pitch for the White. When did Clayton? Lance Lynn pitched for the Rangers too. We we could have used. I didn't even realize. I didn't even think of that. And he Kershaw won the Cy Young and MVP in like right. sixteen or something. Right. You know they get that's how they get you with these, right? Because Lance Lynn was Sox and Cardinals. He was also Rangers and and Sox, and Dodgers and White Sox. So Lance Lynn actually was all three of those. That's amazing. <laughs> Don't tell us not pitch for the Rangers. Was Lance Lynn the one the that White got Sox. shelled last week or last year against the Diamondbacks? Yeah, well, they in, all in got the shelled. And LDS? Yes. And he but gave he, up the four homers in game three. Yeah. I just posted that clip. That's why on on social on, uh, Instagram. I just posted it because it was a memorable clip. All right, let's, let's dive into uh, baseball this week. So I guess we'll start at the top because the Orioles are considered the number one team in baseball right now. Uh, five gold glovers in my or no three gold glovers i'm sorry um and they also survived that gauntlet that they had to face um going through the braves phillies yankees astros guardians mariners and rangers they went 12 and 10 um which as caleb said a couple weeks ago just go 500 against the, the teams that you might not match up well against who was snubbed who do you think was snubbed for the all-star game mike we'll start there snubbed for the all-star game I kind of feel like Grayson Rodriguez maybe got a little, little snub. 
Uh, it's for the, from the American League side. And I'll tell you, from the National League side, because he threw a, a gem and has 10 wins uh, yesterday through a gem, Mitch Keller. I was watching Mitch Keller today. Yeah, last night he pitched. I, I was watching his highlights. Are we talking uh, – we're not just talking from the Orioles. We're talking overall I, I was overall. I was more I mean, just talking from the Orioles. Any snubs oh, from the Orioles. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, from the Orioles, I think, yeah, Grayson Grace Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Overall, yeah. the two that shocked me the most, Christian Walker – on the National League side, and um, Ronel Blanco from the Astros. Just because yeah. he threw a no-hitter and he's had – I mean, he's really anchored that bullpen. Did Luis Heal make the All-Star team? I don't think he did. No. From the he, Yankees. He no. Didn't have snub, yeah. yeah, and he had – but he had a few bad outings in the past month. He's been up and down. But Christian Walker, I want to look up his stats real quick because I looked it up this morning. Actually, well, I think Santander, you know, you can make a case that he, you know. That's a good one. Had a big power surge in June, didn't get the he's call. Got 20, like 23 home runs this year. He's like a fifth or sixth yeah. in the AL. Um, he, it's tough to shine in a lineup with, you know, Rutschman and Henderson, but I think you can make a case that he could have he made it. Yeah, and Luis Hill, Mitch Keller, Pitching snubs, Grayson. So nice. would you would you say this stretch that they've faced in the last month is going to be the toughest that they'll see for the rest of the year, or is it going to get tougher for Baltimore down the stretch? I mean, it, it'll get a little tougher. They they've dominated the American League East. What is what are they at? Like twenty two straight non losing series now, which is I think the longest in the wild card era. I know they they do face the Dodgers in late August. That'll be a great series. They're in Los Angeles at the end of August. They still have a couple more series with the Yankees. They have four games set with Houston on the schedule. That's in Baltimore. Obviously, that's a little bit of a payback series after being swept. I mean, they the fact that they had to play every single day except for one in June should hopefully serve them well. Uh, the question is, what kind of reinforcements are they going to get? Are they going to go out? Are they going to be aggressive? Are they going to make a big splash? dip into that farm system. It's, I don't even know if you, if you like, to me, they need bullpen and starting pitching help. I'd be good if they made a splash in either area. I prefer starting pitching. You always prefer to have a starter over a reliever. You know, you can patch it together with the bullpen. They could I'd use like an to, outfielder. They could, they could use an outfielder. Yeah. I don't think they're going to be. What if you could do all Austin. three? What if you could? Get, what if they were the team that went with the uh, Luis Robert Crochet Kopech trade? Would you give up Jackson Holiday and <laughs> let's say like a bust? I I yeah. might. Yeah, maybe not for those three guys <laughs> specifically, but I I think if you it, the thing is I would only give up Holiday for a controllable guy. I would not give him up for a rental under any circumstance. But if Robert, you could get, I think what is well, Robert's contract? Twenty twenty six, right? Yeah, but I think you need controllable pitching. I mean, they, unless it's, uh, you know, Otani is a rental this year, I, I don't think you can go rental for anything, even offense. But if they if they could get a pitcher, because the problem is Corbin Burns is a free agent this year, and Bradish is going to miss most of, if not all, of next year. Same with John Means. Like, they, they need a starter. They need to also think long-term. I know there's a lot of people feeling like it's an all-in situation this year for the Orioles because they've arrived. But they, I think they have to think a little bit longer term with their starting rotation because of the injuries and because of the likely departure of Corbin Burns, who's a who's a Boris client, right? Corbin Burns, I'm. I well, then he's going to so. get a really shitty contract. Roche has arbitration year two and three in twenty five, twenty six. He's an uh, unrestricted free agent in twenty seven. So you would get two and a half years out of him if you pay him in arbitration. Okay, um, I, I would do that. For crochet and yes, Burns is a Scott Boris client, so he'll probably sign in April of next year with the Cincinnati Reds for one, <laughs> one year, year. $12 million dollars. Yeah, so they they got to they, they got to think ahead. They got to have so if they get a crochet, maybe you could justify throwing a Jackson Holiday in if you were to get a Luis Robert Kopek. I don't know. I mean, Kopech's got a, an electric arm. I kind of feel like. He's overused, which sounds crazy because you wouldn't think the White Sox would have that many save opportunities being as bad as they are. But when he pitches, <laughs> his outings are really long or they're going to turn to him in the eighth in it. Like, so desperate to get the wins. He's just a guy that probably needs a change of scenery, honestly. And he needs competent – he needs a competent coaching staff around him. 
because right. I was watching another podcast. They were saying he's very much like Joe Kelly. He's never going to be an elite, elite reliever, but he throws super, super hard. Um, and he's, you know what you're getting. You're getting a four ERA guy that can strike people out and throw hard. So he's, you wouldn't, you wouldn't need him to close the game out, but he'd be a guy, an extra arm you could use in the sixth, seventh inning. He has started in the past, so he could go in a long relief role, which might be better for him instead of being the guy. Another interesting one is Mason Miller because yeah. they, have the, they have the ammunition. They have all those really handsome blonde infielders in their system, mm -hmm, and you, right. can't, you can't bring all of them up because mm -hmm. where do they all play? you could go get Mason Miller and then next year you would have Felix Bautista and Mason Miller at the end of your bullpen. Uh, and he's signed through 2027. I mean, I, I'm looking here. You could look at Jack Flaherty in Detroit. I think if things really change, like, like you're looking at the, the national league is so close. The cards are four and a half back in the central right now. And they're one up in the, in the wild card, but if, if they have a tough week, tough couple weeks near the deadline, you, I mean, they could be selling just as quickly as they could be buying. And you have Sonny Gray there with a couple years of control. I feel like Sonny Gray could be a realistic move if things change a little bit. But Jack Flaherty, another guy, if, if you want a rental, like if you if you want to try and get a rental, then Jack Flaherty is probably going to be well, your guy. Like getting him again after he sort of bombed last year in Baltimore. Now, I would necessarily be right opposed to – Flaherty 2.0. I mean, he's shown that he's he's had a pretty solid year so far. The team that I think is the most interesting team to watch over these next few weeks because it was like reported that they were definitely going to be sellers is the Rangers because then it was like then you're like, well, wait a minute, yeah, they're 43 and 48 or whatever, but they play in the American League worst, American League West, whatever it's called, <laughs> because they they're very much in it. Whereas any other year, like last year, for example, they probably are dead and buried at that point. And so David Robertson, incredible season he's having. I mean, just the fact that he had that game where he struck out Otani, Freeman, and Betts in a row, back-to-back -back nights. Kirby Yates, another guy, uh, would be a rental. Guys that they can trust as high-leverage guys to either close or bridge the gap to Craig Kimbrell, who, you know, you could also make a case as an all-star snub. As bad as it was for Kimbrell for a while, being demoted at one point, briefly as the closer. His numbers have been pretty darn good. But anyway, I think it'd be really interesting to see what Texas does. Because even because then if they were selling, maybe even a Max Scherzer goes onto the market. Not that he's prime Max Scherzer, but who wouldn't love to have that dog in the fight? You know, the guy that's been <laughs> through the ringer a bunch of times. Uh, but do you think if you're the, if you're, is it Chris Young is the GM of mm -hmm. the Rangers, do yeah. you think that their ownership and management is ready to throw in the towel in this season. They just won a World Series. They have the All-Star game in Texas. Or you think they're willing to let their fan base down like that? Because they're not out of it, out of it. I, I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. But I think, they, I think they will convince themselves that they have a shot. I don't think they're going to sell. I really do. They, they'd have to really plummet over the next couple of weeks to even think about it. Because like you said, they are alive. They're, they're not really at all alive in the wild card. I think they're like seven games out of a wild card spot. Or seven games back right now. Six and a half. Five and a half out of the AL. Five and a half out of the American League West. Now, granted, there's two teams in front of them, but they play Houston next weekend before going into the All-Star break. They're playing the Angels right now. Like, There's a good chance Texas could be like right around first place when the trade deadline comes, even if their record's not that good. So, yeah, I don't, I do not see them selling you know, unless they lose like 10 out of 12 or something. And even then, I think you'd only be looking at a couple of rental guys. You know, like I said, those two back-end bullpen guys are not going to be parting with any, you know, young, controllable talent, certainly. And they're, they're going to get Josh Young back as well as DeGrom, I think, at some point, which is huge yeah. for their offense. Young, but, young went – he had a rehab assignment. He went four for 17 with five strikeouts, and then they pulled him back off. They said he was still having some wrist soreness. And he hasn't swung a bat in a month. They're saying they think it could be like August timeline type of thing. But they have they have Dane Dunning coming back, who is like a solid back end starter, yes, maybe like man, a long yeah. reliever. Um Tyler May Mayley, I hope I said oh, that right. Yeah. Uh, sixteen ERA in twenty thirteen, although he hasn't pitched this year, he's coming back. I think he had UCL surgery. Carson Coleman, he was a twenty twenty two Eastern League reliever of the year. 
He didn't pitch last year. They think he could have an impact on the club um, coming in maybe late this year, in like in August. And then obviously DeGrom coming back, you know you're going to get eight starts, but you'd rather have those eight starts at the end of the year than at the beginning of the well, year. That's what I said about Bradish. That's exactly what I said about <laughs> Kyle Bradish on this program before. Yes. Are they going to be in it by September? That's the question. But yeah, the Rangers, there's, there's reason to think they'll, they'll be buying. And you know the Astros are going to be buying. And, and that's, that should worry people because, again, most years, if being right around 500, they might not be in it. But they're two games back, and they're one back in the loss column. They were 10 games out of first place like three weeks ago. I think June 1st. I thought it was like June 1st. I think 1st even more recently. Like I think it was mid-June. The Mariners have gone 5-12 and 12 in their last 17 games. The Astros have gone... 14 and four or 13 and four. And they're, you know, they, after they got rid of Abreu, they haven't had an issue with their offense. They're going to get Kyle Tucker and Justin Verlander back, presumably. It's like, here we go again. They may not yeah. get a buy in the first round, but there's no reason to think they can't be the top team in the American League when it's all said and done. Especially when there's only really one elite team in the American League anyway, and they're young. That's the only, that's right. my only worry with the Orioles is when it comes time for, you know, the experience to play a real factor, do they have it? And the answer is right. no. Most of them have never been in the playoffs. Well, on the other hand, the Astros, those guys do it every single year. When it comes time to really grind, they know how to get it done. Um, and I hate the Astros. They're cheaters. <laughs> well, they threw at Correa intentionally. They took him out last game. That that was not a nice thing to do. I mean, I understand they were frustrated that Altuve and Alvarez have been hit. But, yeah, and you look at the Central. I mean, the Central could send three teams to the playoffs, but they're also all – well, two of them are young, obviously the Royals and the Guardians, and one should never be allowed in the playoffs ever because they have wasted a spot for 20 years and have, I think, nine postseason wins since their last World Series, which is the Twins. Just yeah, no. miserable, miserable. And, and, and there's a good chance. But if, this, if the playoffs started today, you know who the Twins would face in the first round? He's, oh, they would. Uh, lost, right? Every single time. They've lost. And it's, they just, lost? it's just going to give times? the Yankees another playoff series win, too. And it's going to give them the false confidence. Right, right. They get it's, every year. I'd rather the Yankees have a bye than face the Twins at yeah. this point. You know? And, uh, and the Yankees went... 6-0 and against the Twins this year, I think. Correct me <laughs> if I'm wrong. I believe they swept them both series they faced, faced them. So, I mean, again, you know, you can't take the Twins seriously under any circumstances. Cleveland's interesting. I mean, I, I'm, I'd like to see if they – if they, they need a bat, and they could obviously use a starter because they've had to go the whole year without Shane Bieber. They're, they have a really good bullpen, and they've got a lot of guys that find ways to get on base, and it starts at the top with Stephen Kwan. They're a really good defensive team. They need they need a, a a thumper in the lineup. See, I, the Mets aren't going to trade, but Pete Alonso. The Mets are not going to win a World Series either. Why not think about trading Alonso or JD Martinez? There's going to be a team desperate to give up a lot for those guys. Alonso would fit in so well in Cleveland. Perfect. For before we jump onto the Mets, I do want to talk about the Detroit Tigers. Thirteen of I think their next nineteen, or sorry, seventeen of their next twenty three are against American League Central opponents. And they've won four straight. They're 10 back right now. Is that correct? Yeah. Let's see, where is it at? Yeah, they're 10 back of the division. Or seven back. No, 14. I'm getting my numbers all fucked up. <laughs> 14 back of the AL Central right now. They're seven back of a wild card spot. With And they still have Toronto, and they also have the Dodgers, which we're going to assume they'll probably take one off the Dodgers just because – Feels like the Dodgers do that. They don't. They'll win the series, but they're not going to sweep you right now. Um, but the Tigers are a very kind of outside, but not outside chance. Their schedule is just lining up great. Um, they do. They'll have a little bit of a tougher stretch down the after they play Kansas City um, in August. They got Seattle, San Fran, Seattle, and then the Yankees after that. Are you that. saying so, that Kansas City is in a tough series? Oh, I'm saying Kansas City is included in the tough series. Okay. Um, but then after that, they have another tough stretch. Then they'll get Chicago, the other Chicago, uh, the Angels. So a, an easy stretch kind of towards the end of August. But I think Detroit is a very reasonable kind of dark horse to, to maybe win the AL Central or snag a wild card spot. I don't think Guardians, they have any no. I think they have good pitching. I think, think that so. they could 
push for a wild card. The question is whether they'll be sellers. I mean, they don't, that they're, you know, again, like they're a young team. So there's not a lot of like big veteran names. I mean, nobody wants Javi Baez hitting under 200 with that contract. So, you know, like yeah. throw that out the window. Any of their, most of their starters and relievers are young too. So I don't know. They're, they're a team that's going to be, no, like, I don't want to say no one wants to face them, but they're, they're a team that you shouldn't take lightly. You know, they're playing good baseball right now. Again, they're a young team. A.J. Hinch has been through the ringer before. So, well, it's I wouldn't completely rule it out. I just think they've got a, a too big of a hill, I think, to climb over three teams in the Central to win that division. And the AL wild cards will be really difficult as it is because you've got we, – we just see what Tampa Bay is going to do. But like you were just saying, you've got the Rangers, the Astros. If the Astros overtake the Mariners, the Mariners are a wild card team. You have the Twins and Royals. Then, uh, obviously, the Red Sox and the Yankees. There's too many There's too many teams in the American League that are already fighting for those three spots to make a run at it if you're Detroit when there's only four or five teams that are, like, for sure selling and so many teams that need to buy, especially in the National League, where there's that huge jumble for the wild card over there. Yeah. If you have something you can sell, you have to sell this year. Mm-hmm. So if you've got the the A's, the Marlins, the White Sox, the Angels, and the Athletics, those are the only for sure sellers. I mean, you, yeah. there's 20 teams looking to buy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, then, and I guess we can now jump over to the Mets and just talk a little Pete Alonzo because – Everything that I've been hearing, they say that Alonzo is safe to not be sold because they're, you know, they're two and a half out of the wild card. They went on that hot streak with Grimace and and that stupid song that what Jose Iglesias, am I correct? Jose Iglesias wrote that song. Yes, he did. Um, Which great song. It's a, it's a, it's a very fun song. It's a great summer song. I mean, real real Red Sox fans remember Jose Iglesias at shortstop on the on the Red Sox in like 2012. Well, making um, that error in the 2013 for the Tigers that set up Victorino's grand slam in Game Six, of the ALCS. Yeah, yeah he's legend. Weird. It's just weird that he was playing baseball at that time, and now he's in 2024 writing a song that he performs on the field at City Field for the Mets and weird. still hitting. Like he's still hitting well. Isn't he over 300? Or he was. I, he he's was. I think he's like those. flirting with it. He's definitely got, kind of going back and forth. I think I don't know why the Mets just keep. It, it doesn't feel like the Mets really ever do the reset thing. They don't ever really just sell it all and tear it down. They they're like trying to hold on to this little fragment of a chance that they have at th- saying, "Hey, it's October. You never know. As long as we get in, right?" But it doesn't feel like that with this team. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of teams you could say that about. The Twins, the Blue Jays, the Mariners, the Brewers, the Rays. I mean, they, like these teams that just are in this rut and they're in this like cycle where there's there's only a, there's a low ceiling but a high floor, you know, and it's like they just are so resistant to sort of tearing it down properly. But I you know, the thing is with the Mets, they have a, a lot of money. And so it's really hard for teams with money to ever have enough pride to say, we're, we're just going to kind of, we'll, we'll tank for a year. We're okay losing for a year. That's, see, I respect that about the Red Sox. I don't know if it's intentional, but they will have bad years. And they and it will probably make the good years feel that much sweeter. You know, you win in 2013 after you win last place in 2012. Then you go to last place the year after 2013. They couldn't get, they couldn't wait to sell. They couldn't wait to just get everyone out of the building. It it felt like opening day 2014, they were already, like, they were putting the boot on to kick them out. They were like, let's get these fucking guys out of here and let's let's bring Mookie up already. Let's do it. Like, they were ready to go, and then they couldn't wait to get rid of that Mookie Betts guy. Get his ass out of here. He's horrible. Get him out of here. So, um, that is the one thing they have done well. They, they know when to tear it down and say, there's no shot. There's just no shot this year. Yeah. I mean, John, do you think the Mets will ever tear it down? I, I don't. I can't see him doing it. No, I think they're going to be buyers of the deadline. I think they're going to make a stupid move yep. for somebody that they don't need <laughs> just to put on the illusion that they are trying to win now. Because they always do that. They're always in win now mode, mm-hmm. which is insane because they never win. They're like, they, they have the pieces. Somebody would give up. I mean, 
maybe not a, a huge piece, but you could rebuild your farm system, one, by moving J.D. Martinez for a lottery ticket or two, and then you could get somebody's a handful of top 20 prospects for Alonzo, even if well, he's not – if you can convince Alonzo – if you are pretty sure that you could re-sign Alonzo, if you can get – yeah, an extension done with Alonzo, because he's, he's a 45 to 55 home run a year guy – for the next two, three years. Because he's, he's not super young. How old is Pete Alonso? Is he 20? I think he's like 30. Yeah. Yeah. Jose Iglesias batting 313. I was just 20. Always starts out hot. Oh, he's got 67 right. at bats. Yeah. D yeah. Didn't mean to cut you off there, John. Uh, the Mets just made a trade. I actually have a Mets fan friend who just reached out. And so, right on cue, they, they picked up Phil Maton from the Rays. <laughs> So a stupid piece Making they don't use, need. So, well, a guy who brings who was really good in the postseason last year for the Astros, horrible this year, and at the in the la, the last series of the 2022 regular season, he punched a wall because he gave up a hit to his brother. He missed the entire postseason. You know who told me that it was because he gave up a hit to his brother? His uncle told me that when we were sitting behind him at a Tigers Nationals game last year. And I don't know how he got started talking. He said, oh, my nephew plays for the – or something plays for the Tigers. He said, Nick, uh, Nick Maton, who the Orioles had for a minute this year. And he somehow ended up telling us the story about how Phil was so upset that he gave up a hit to his brother in the regular season. The Astros and Phillies played the last season – last series of the 2022 regular season. And he was so upset and he missed the postseason because he punched a wall and broke his hand. And now the Mets have him. That sounds perfectly on brand. You called yeah. it, John. You almost you, you spoke that trade into existence. Because <laughs> they they're run by morons, apparently. I don't remember the last time the Mets made like a really savvy move. Maybe bring in Lindor, but they probably gave up. I mean, that hasn't gone extremely well. Honestly, I really like the JD Martinez move. Yeah, but now I really like trade him. But they have to trade him now. But I think at the time he was he was seen as kind of this aging star where you don't know what you're going to get out of him. But you knew if you did get the good Martinez, your lineup could be OK and, and maybe you could make a run at this thing. And listen, like they are the Mets. We know what's going to happen. But they're sitting two and a half games out of a wild card spot right now. That's it's not like they're they're completely out of it. But this more just feels like it feels like the end of the the white Sox, like that little young core they tried it feels like the end of like the last playoff push so they should look, sell look at the national league how many other teams are two games out of the wild card right now in the national league just about every team yeah yeah pretty much everybody yeah uh, chicago is is the bottom of that and they're five and a half out but again i mean you're still close you're still in the battle it's it's not like you're not playing meaningful baseball down the stretch um and another team playing meaningful baseball down the stretch, the Arizona Diamondbacks. They have kind of turned it on. They're 21 and 11, or not, not them. I'm sorry. I'm trying to find well, they, my they, notes. They had turned it on, and Paul Sewald, they'd have a nine-game winning streak if Paul Sewald hasn't, hadn't blown three straight saves after being perfect to start the year. They were an out away from winning last night. and now 20 and 13 since June 1st, and this week they took two of three uh, from the Dodgers and the Padres. And then, right, and they, they were an out away from winning last night against the Braves. Eddie Rosario, just brought back by the Braves, got a hit, and Sean Murphy had a two-run homer, sent the game to extra innings, and the Braves won against the Diamondbacks. Yeah, the, it can the happen that fast. Where, where, I mean, where are they going to – I assume they're going to add. Like, you, you have to think they're going to add at the deadline. They're not going to sell. No, they're not going to add uh, because they have Merrill Kelly and Eduardo Rodriguez that they're – at least banking on to come back, especially Merrill Kelly. I'm sure you don't feel too bad about Eduardo Rodriguez not being on the Red Sox at this point, right? He, I mean, he, he had a weird stretch with Detroit last year. I think he disappeared for like a couple weeks. Nobody knew where he went. I love I love Eddie. I know he had some like mental demons, at least that Alex Cora would talk about and he would talk about kind of openly. There's always that famous quip, clip of the Yasiel Puig home run and and Eddie is slamming his glove down on the ground. That's that's a famous uh, gift that gets tweeted all the time or threaded. Yeah, or and Dennis Eckersley criticized the 
Eduardo Rodriguez's rehab start and then David Price confronted Eckersley on the team plane. That was yeah. another story. Um, and then Eddie doing the um pretty sure it was Eddie doing the, the clock to the Astros in the twenty twenty one ALCS yeah. set the Astros off and everyone even Alex Cora was like, What the fuck are you right. doing, dude? You don't do that. <laughs> yeah, the Orioles traded don't. Eddie for Andrew Miller in twenty fourteen and uh that was one that you know worked out at the time for the Orioles, but I always regretted that they Gave up a pretty good young pitcher. And, of course, he had that scary – he had the myocarditis as a result of having coronavirus back in 2020 or 21. But, anyway, I yeah, I don't see the Diamondbacks doing anything super aggressive. I don't know. Again, they you know, it's like John was saying about the Rangers where, you know, you, you're coming off a World Series appearance. And do you really – I mean, is this the time to tear it down? But at the same time – I don't know. I mean, what are they going to outcompete these other teams in the mar You know, I, I don't see them adding anyone notable, maybe smaller pieces. I mean, last year, Seawald and Tommy Pham were their big additions at the yeah. deadline. And then, and on, look, to their credit, both of those guys were pretty big time performers, at least for Seawald up until the World Series, you know. But Pham was great in the postseason, and Seawald was good in the first few rounds. So they're going to, I think they'll hold Pat. I think they're going to stand because they have. Jordan the Jordan Lawler is yep. probably ready to come up. Uh, Davison De Los Santos probably ready to come up. They don't have much pitching on the way, but offensively, they could be loaded in two three years. Well, I think would be like I said. I don't think they're going to sell. I don't think they're going to buy. I think they'll just hope maybe a sneak in, and if not, they'll take a shot at it next year. Yeah, but in the they, next they, few years, they are going to go all in though. You think so? Yeah. I mean, look, they won 84 games last year in the regular season. That was enough to get them to the postseason. And then obviously we know what happened. And um, they got a really good major league debut last night from Yilber Diaz. Maybe, maybe he'll be a part of their rotation. Who knows? All right. And then before we jump into the uh, our, our draft today, I want to talk a little bit, just a little bit about the Red Sox. I know, I know you guys don't want to hear about the Red Sox. They Four-time World Series champions in the last 20 years, but the Red Sox are hot. They are the um, one of the best teams in baseball in the last month and a half. The rotation, re really the offense, and I think I said this at the beginning of the year. I said our offense would wake up because we were scoring like one run a game throughout April. It was horrible. But we have found – we find a way to just kind of irritate the Yankees. Really, that's what it feels like. We had what – uh the, Reds, the Nesson announcers called the win of the season on Friday night, came back down uh, three runs, uh, you know, ended up winning the game in extras. So, I mean, this Red Sox team, they're, they're going to be adding two pieces, Liam Hendricks and Tristan Cassis at the deadline. I still think there's a reasonable chance that they're going to run, make a run at this division. I mean, they're seven and a half out before the all-star break. This is like the perfect time to either, you hit the gas and that car goes or the car just kind of sputters out and it dies. I don't think they're going to add all that much at the, at the deadline. Uh, Craig Breslow and, and the guys that he worked under over in Chicago, they've always been very meticulous about what they do at the deadline. If you really think about Chicago and the Cubs, the only real big deadline they've had was that 2016 deadline where they did win the World Series. I don't think the Red Sox are going to really add that much. They, they don't really seem... If, if they think there's a real realistic possibility of winning the World Series, I think they're going to be aggressive at the deadline. But I don't think they think that. And Alex Cora has come out, and it's been kind of weird. He said some things where they're positive, and he's like, yeah, I think we have a real shot at this thing. And then it seems like maybe somebody on the inside kind of like slapped him in the face, like, shut up, don't, don't give the fans anything. We're not adding at the deadline, basically. And he was a little bit more like, yeah, I don't know what we're going to do, but... As a, as a Baltimorean, Michael, where is the fear level about the Red Sox? Because they seem a lot more intimidating than the Yankees right now. Yeah, I'm, the Orioles have done pretty well against the Red Sox this year. So from a worry perspective, <laughs> no. But it's it's nice to see. I actually, I, I like seeing the Red Sox do well when they're like an underdog. I mean, right? They're, this isn't like the team that's buying all these big stars or not the, you know, late 2000s Red Sox. Uh, they, they stood pat in the offseason, took so much grief for it, and... Here they are, what, ten, what are they, 10 games, 12 games over 500, 10 games, whatever they are, they're hot as can be. And uh, I think I think they will add somebody. I think it'll be in the bullpen. 
I think they they'll get like an arm, like you know, a, a low risk kind of high reward. I was was it the was it the ESPN? I must have been the ESPN game because I was watching the Red Sox the other night, so I had to be Sunday. And I think Sunday night Carl Ravitch or something. He said somewhere Chaim Bloom is smiling, seeing all these guys, <laughs> you know, all these young guys performing. Right? He, he again, another guy that took so much grief. But here you go with all these young. You know, to Duran and Rafaela and, you know, obviously Devers is just a Yankee killer, which yeah, would be fun to watch for which you. Which he just got stretched out of the All-Star game, by the way. That was, that happened like 20 minutes ago, which sucks, but oh. it's well, the All-Star Tyler, game. What are you going to do? Tyler Glass now just hit the IL. Yeah, Again? Back, uh, back tightness. Yeah. He's, he's killing my preseason predictions. Because, like, the first oh, yeah, you had games him as a- And I had Adley Rutschman as the MVP, and Gunnar Henderson's killing me there. But uh, I'll flip over to my team. My fear level with the Red Sox is like a nine because <laughs> – Well, it should be right now. Because <laughs> the, the past week we've been within like a half a, half a game to a game of each other. Uh, and we, uh, we we win one, you win one, but then we, we lose one, you win one. And it's killing us. It's, Royals aren't going to make the postseason. And I wish we would sell, but um, – because it'd be a great year to sell someone like Seth Lugo. The on, weenies. Shh. They're getting a little feisty. The Red Sox. I had them look looking at some of the relievers from Washington, like Dylan Floro, Hunter Harvey. Maybe not a, a true because Finnegan in Washington might be a, a true closer, um, but the other two, Harvey and Floro, are super solid seventh eighth inning guys. Yeah, and I could see that being a reasonably priced move uh the red sox could make because they're really not far from competing and they have the star power they have the the devers uh, Aaron duran is a guy who is going to be a superstar who did not um, get snubbed from the all-star game thank yeah. god yeah here he deserves <laughs> it reason has uh prevailed so we are running a little short on time so we're gonna do okay. we're not gonna do a draft we're gonna do just top five baseball movies we're going to compile a list together. It should only take about a minute or two. So um, I'm going to start. My number one is Moneyball. I, I don't care it, how it's how it's worked out. I love Moneyball. There is just the soundtrack in that movie is fantastic. Obviously, uh, the Scott Hatterberg scene is a great one. And Jonah Hill and Brad Pitt just play off each other fantastic. They are just the perfect kind of uh, opposite but the same person at, at the exact same time. The, the scene, where, you know, that Jonah Hill makes his first trade when he's, give, you know, given the fist pump. Great, fantastic scene. And, and then when they trade for a soda machine, I love that. Those are just like the little things in baseball that you hear about, but you never really get to see. So that was like a great little uh, moment to add on to that. I hate Moneyball. We've discussed <laughs> this in the past. So are we, go, still... are we, go, are we move going around the table or are we each giving yeah, we're five? Just... We're just going to go around the table. You give me one. Mike, give me one. And I guess we'll each do two, so it's fair. The next one, obviously the, the, the next best baseball movie, Field of Dreams. It, I've been to the Field of Dreams twice. A surreal kind of experience as a baseball fan. It's a really, really cool touristy thing in the middle of nowhere. And you can still <laughs> play baseball on the field, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and just kind of a lot of classic baseball talk. In that movie, for me, like growing up watching with my dad and him telling me all about the Black Sox and and some of that that era of the game, it was a lot of fun. All right, Mike. Well, I think you were showing your age, Alex, with the Moneyball being a more recent movie. And I'm going Sandlot. I mean, I just, because we were talking about last week how I I had never seen Bull Durham. Shame on me. I got to see it. I've seen Field of Dreams before. So I'm going to go Sandlot. I'm just sentimental for that movie because it came out when I was nine. Good one. Uh, I'm going to go with, again, I think this is this is the most enjoyable, I guess, baseball movie because it was the best as, as a film perspective is Moneyball. Most enjoyable is Little Big League. Uh, that well, other one that they that, made yeah. with the Chicago Cubs is a horrible movie. It's horrible acting, horrible baseball being played. I like the storyline. Obviously, a kid gets to pitch. for No, 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 no. Little Big League is... You're thinking a rookie of the year. Yeah, as I was gonna say, yeah. No, no, no. no. I'm saying the, the the other one. The other one is the Chicago Cubs rookie oh, of the year. Oh, the other one. I think one they came that. out. Okay. They came out in the same year. Little Big League gets a lot of a lot like less they were a year apart. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. mom in Little Big League, the the kid's mom, her son is on the Cubs now. Is Pete Crow Armstrong? Yeah, 
Found that out when I was at a convention. Yeah. Um, that mom, I gotta say, hot. The one in the one in um, thirty years ago, sure, yeah. The the one in in uh, rookie of the year, not my type, but little big league, she is wood, wood, hundred percent. But what's your next one, John? So I'm torn between a few. Has anybody else seen Chasing Three Thousand? I thought it was Mister Three Thousand. I thought, yeah, I thought no. it was Mister Three Thousand. Chasing Three Thousand is Ray Liotta. Uh, it's him. <laughs> talking about, well, he plays a character whose little brother is in a wheelchair, has muscular dystrophy, and they want to go see Roberto Clemente's 3,000th hit. So it takes mm-hmm. place back in the 70s. So they steal their parents' car and drive across the country to mm-hmm. go see, to try to make it to the game where Clemente gets his 3,000th hit. Um, and I'm a big Clemente fan. So it doesn't, it's not another movie that's not great. Uh, I don't think Ray Liotta is very good uh, in many movies he does, but as a big Clemente fan and baseball history guy, uh, I thought it was a, it was a good movie to watch if you're trying to learn about like some of the less remembered uh, greats of the game. I'm gonna have to check that out. I've never even heard of it. Uh, one of the Colkin mm-hmm. brothers is also in it. Uh, He's Rory, the, young, yeah. is the younger Mike. brother in the movie. I'll go with another 90s baseball movie for my last pick. I'll go Major League. Willie Mays Hayes, Rick Wildling Vaughn, Jake Taylor, you know, Roger Dorn. Good good cast of characters. A guy I took pitching lessons from when I was a kid in the Baltimore area uh, named Dave Boswell passed away a while back. He uh, played an umpire in Major League Two, and I remember thinking that was so cool. And he's saying, yeah, they still send me residual checks for probably like 20 cents. He's the one that tells Rube Baker, he said, son, if you throw this ball down to third base one more time, we're going to have a real problem or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. was his line in the movie. So, And um, my one of my friends growing up was an extra or had a, you know, you see him for a split second in Major League Two. So I always feel like, and they, and they filmed that in Baltimore. They've actually had a scene at a house like right down the street where I grew up. So there's a lot of sentimentality, if you will. Major that. League Two, the, on, the only thing wrong that I personally don't like is how they replaced Willie Mays Hayes. Like right, different actor, Mays. same character. I hate when people, when movies do that. I know. I get, I get it, but I still hate it. I, I mean, Wesley Snipes was filming a lot of stuff then. He probably just couldn't fit that into his schedule. So they oh, like, yeah. oh, we'll go Omar Epps, launch yeah. his career. <laughs> All right, well... Thank you, boys, for joining. Uh, I know we went a couple minutes over time, um, but make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you next week.